Hey folks, so in the last video you saw that we managed to get the y-axis of the CNC machine moving on its own. So what we used to do that was this, um, what I did say was this very temporary setup to do it with the uh, separate driver and Arduino to control it. Uh, and I did say obviously that was only the, the first part of making this work just as a proof of concept. Um, and now since then, a whole bunch of electronic components have arrived. So um, this is most of the bones of what we're going to need to build out um, the final uh, version of the, well, the, the first fully working version of the electronics for this. Um, we have here a 12 volt power supply. So this will take, um, uh, it was a 110 or a 220 volts and put it down to 12 volts and a bunch of uh, screw terminals out of it to power everything so the whole thing is going to be driven off 12 volts it's also capable of uh, you're capable of drawing 20 amps from it so it's more than enough for what we should need um so one of the problems that i was having with this cutting out on me when i started to adjust the the current and um, being supplied to the motors um we've got this nice little power switch which is a little three pin plug and an led power switch that came from all of this came from amazon and that came that was a very nice little find so that is what will power from the mains to this guy um what else have we got I have a little um surface mount USB cable, which will go into the uh, the controller board. Um, so then this kit I also got, which is a really nice little kit. I'll open it up. Um, it's basically a few cables in there, but pretty much what it is, is it's an Arduino Uno and uh, the Arduino CNC shield um, and a bunch of the, a bunch of the, um, the driver ICs for that. Um, which I think are the same as this one, DRV 8825s. Um, I think that's all that comes in the kit. Yeah, there's a few uh, little connector pins as well. But that this guy was was pretty cheap. I think it was uh, that was 25 euro, so probably what 30 30 dollars or something like that. Um, and yeah, that's that's going to be the main brains and drive for it. My plan is I'm going to install Gerbil uh, on this and the Gerbil firmware onto that and then use that to drive and control the whole thing. So then this uh, USB cable will be how you interface with um, with the machine to to drive it serially. Um, what else have we got here? Oh yeah, and then this is just a few limit switches that I got um, and they will uh, they should connect up here um, pretty easily. And not exactly sure how that, what way I'm going to mount the limit switches, I have to figure that out, but that's for a little bit down the road. Um, so the the main thing is looking at this now all out in front of me it's 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 quite a lot of stuff um so i have to get all of this into this footprint um and obviously it's not going to fit within just within the rails of the the framework here that i built so the plan is i'm going to make a wooden box that this sits on so it'll be you know like that and then all of the electronics will sit inside that box um it'll be nice and safe and secure in there I'm going to kind of seal up the box nicely um, so that I can keep dust out of it um, and also have a couple of um, computer fans which are coming which will be mounted on the back part of the box um, to give me some ventilation for the whole thing. So first thing to do is build that box. So that's the next thing you're going to see me do. Um, then we'll figure out how to mount all the electronics and all the parts and then hopefully by the end of this whole video we'll have much the same demo as we had before except it'll be with the you know proper wiring done um, and it'll possibly be uh, Gerbil controlled moving the uh, the y-axis. This next part is more or less going to be I like playing Tetris though so I've, I've brought most of the the components that meant to like the outsides of the box and need um, holes in like the sides and also the, the single biggest part which is the power supply um, so I brought these out to be able to lay them out in person so I can see like you know where cables will run and and you know what what I can measure them exactly for hole patterns mounting holes and and the slots that I'm going to need to cut in the sides of the um the plywood box that I'm going to be making to fit them in and just you know where they'll all position so I'm going to open them up and just sort of play around with them and um, I have a whole bunch of plywood and um, so I'm going to start cutting up some plywood and just make kind of a, a rough box for it um that's about it so I'll do most of this on time lapse probably um it's not super interesting I'll check back in with you guys in a while. Thank you. 
this is our basic system diagram now for um for how it's going to be and also it's the, the layout as well um, I went over it in black marker just so it shows up a little bit better but it's it's very straightforward there's, there's really not a hell of a lot going on um we've got power supply unit here the the biggest single piece of the system so that that's going to sit here off to the side here we've got our on off switch which is where our mains cable is going to plug in so that has kind of 220 volts coming down into the power supply unit here then from the power supply unit we've got uh, 12 volts coming out so this there's one 12 volt line that's going to come straight out to this space here where the um, Arduino is going to sit with the CNC shield on it and all the motor drivers um, there's also a USB cable here which is that long uh, patch panel mount patch cable that I have so that's going to be at the front here so that's where you'll plug your USB in from your computer and that will connect to the uh, to the Arduino here. Now in the future, you notice I do have like a load more space around here. It, there is potential in the future that I'll get rid of this patch cable and that there'll be like an onboard, like a more high level computer, maybe something like a Raspberry Pi or something like that, which will have, you know, more high level control. So you'll be able to, you know, control this over a network or something for instance. Um, but for now it'll be a direct, uh, just a serial connection. So I've got that in place. Um, only other thing then, we've got, uh, there's a DC buck converter here, which is going to step um, 12 volts from here down to uh, 5 volts for the two fans. So one fan on this side and one fan on that side, and they'll be set up, one will be sucking air in, the other one will be blowing air out. Um, maybe. Yeah, why not? Let's see. <laughs> um, so, oh, the only other thing that is missing here is there should be a small little, uh, there's going to be a hole basically here, which is where um, the uh, where the cables will come in uh, for everything. So all the motor cables will come in and connect to here and the limit switch cables and everything. And there'll, there'll be a big trunk of cables coming through there. That is about it for the layout. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount to the two sides here because there's no, there's nothing that needs to be modified on those sides so they can be mounted hard. Then on this side I need to cut the slot for the limit switch and the USB and then on the back piece I need to cut the slots for the fans and the slot for the power cables. After that I'll probably install, I'll probably install all that stuff, um, uh, the power supply anyway, I'll screw that down, I'll screw the fans in place and then I'll probably get out of this freezing cold shed and uh, maybe wire up uh, the Arduino with the uh, the shield and I'll pop some little mounting holes in here so I can uh, slot it so I can fix it in place. Um, that'll be later on in the warm. So you just watched me make this piece for the last while. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I put it on the wrong piece. Uh, so those features, the fan holes and the hole for the cables is meant to go on the long back piece. Uh, not the side piece. Side piece is where the switch is meant to go and the USB connector. <laughs> uh, that was so stupid. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to cut another piece of wood this size. <laughs> and I'm going to copy all of these features exactly as they are onto this piece of wood and cut them out again. I can't believe I've done that. <laughs> oh well. Uh...
Okay, this is progress. Um, I've got the box done. I <laughs> remade the side panel, which I, I I did it begrudgingly. I was just angry the whole time I was doing it. Um, nah, I'm kidding. Uh, silly mistakes happen. You just gotta roll with it. Um, but yeah, that that went pretty smoothly. It was um, this box is. And you might have noticed that there's some weird numbers and stuff on on some of the pieces, and there's part of like backside of these pieces are varnished that is all reused timber from a previous project. Um, so unfortunately, there's not a square edge in the in the thing, uh, and I wasn't bothered trying to fully square everything up on my table saw first. So I am um, kind of there's some wonky cuts in here, and some of it's <laughs> some of it doesn't quite match up, but really it it doesn't matter at all. Um, some of the more egregious ones I'm going to uh, clean up with um, probably with the, the planer just just smooth out some of the edges and then um, the whole thing will be getting nicely sanded and then it'll all be painted black probably so I don't think you're gonna notice um, much of uh, yeah much of that uh, much of the shoddy workmanship except on the inside you'll see it um, but yeah, it's all it's all there. So the the fans will bolt in place here um, at the back. Then these little um, grates and covers will go on the outside. Um, well, the mesh part will go on the inside, and the little grate will go on the outside, which is nice. It'll be held together with some M4 uh, screws. Um, then on this side, the um, the little power switch dealy fits in there quite nicely and the same with the USB so they will be screwed on from the outside and the power supply unit will be screwed down to the board. So that's more or less uh, mechanically all that stuff done so I just need to clean up the whole thing and I'm gonna wait because this is just glue on this that needs to dry and stuff so I will wait till that cures and then I'm gonna do some finishing on the box and you know shine it up make it a bit nicer and uh, paint it and then I will be going back inside where it's warm so it is freezing out here right now so i'm gonna leave it here for the day because it's getting far too cold all right you caught me i uh i did some work while you weren't looking but in my defense i didn't do very much work and um, so you might notice from down here the box has snazzy new paint job and cleaned up all the edges and everything smoothed everything out made it look a little bit nicer just trying to get that professional feel you know <laughs> i know that this is professional but you know Anyway, um, so the other stuff I've done, I uh, just got what like what are the final little bits of the circuit boards with their their mounting points of standoffs, so just I can position them. <laughs> Had to take them out of their cellophane and everything. You you wouldn't believe it. Um, so yeah, but they're ready. Uh, I need to drill some holes and stuff to to mount them to the base plate here. I need to figure out the best positions. Um, the only other bit then that is new, you notice there's a new hole here on what is going to be the front of the machine, and that is for the uh, emergency uh, e-stop switch. So the next thing uh, is literally to start assembling these things. So you need to mount the e-stop switch, mount the power switch on the side, screw them in place, screw the uh, motors in, or the fans in place with their little grills, mount the power supply, and figure out the position of these guys and drill the holes sticking down with some glue um so once all that's done then i'm going to mount the mount the actual um rig to this like the the chassis to this um and then i'll probably bring it back inside into the warm where i'll wire it up
that is the assembly of the electronics cabinet done. Um, it was a little bit painful if you couldn't tell from the from the footage. Um, had some struggles with the USB port, I had to take down a good bit of material off there, but it happens to now be a nice <laughs> compression fit with no screws, the same for the switch, so that's a, a little bit of a win. But yeah, we have all that mounted, we have the, the e-stop button, which is so satisfying, absolutely love that. I'm gonna think, you know, maybe leave a suggestion in the comments if you can think of some other projects I to do that just involve putting e-stop switches on things that don't need e-stop switches because I think everything should have one <laughs> personally um, and he also had some trouble with screws for the mounting of these I made an absolute hames of it also lost some screws inside this cavity here and some nuts inside that cavity which I couldn't get at so that took me a while to get them out then I remembered I had washers uh, I'll probably cut these down to length as well because they don't need to be that long um, and put two more <laughs> on each side I thought I had the right number and the right size turns out I didn't anyway we got there they're they're in place anyway um and yeah finally got these these guys all mounted in place and they're nice and solid so they're kind of wedged in to the little holes that I drilled and then also a bit of super glue on them as well so they are not going anywhere um and yeah that's that's pretty much the assembly for the electronics cabinet so I am freezing cold again yet again uh, so I'm gonna go back inside and this guy still kind of smells like paint so I might leave him out here uh, even with the electronics in it which I don't know if I'm brave enough gets kind of a little bit damp in this workshop or I might just bring it in and put up with the smell not sure anyway that's finished so the next part is to wire it all up so I need to connect power supply cables here I have to wire in the east stop I have to wire in 12 volts out to this guy 12 to here 5 out to here plug the motors in, need to get some, need to put some ports, that's what this, this is breakout board is for, there's going to be some ports to go in here. Uh, the breakout board also might be used to, as kind of a jumper uh, over to here because and you see these are all just sort of header pins and stuff and um, they're not the most like robust. So what I'm thinking I might do is I might use this as an intermediary, put some of these um, JSD connectors on here so cables can come in, plug into the JSD connectors and then I can jump cables over to to here. Um, not sure, not certain yet. I have to figure that out when I start uh, wiring things up. But yeah, we're making good progress. Uh, other thing actually you haven't seen yet, which I can show is so on the frame, which is going to sit in here like this. Um, previously, in older versions, you might have noticed there were some kind of um, flimsy looking little uh, plastic pieces in the corners which uh, I do have to confess <laughs> when I originally designed them in my head they were bigger for some reason I know this is CAD and 3D modeling and I literally have all of the dimensions in front of me but I just designed it and went yeah that'll fit and then when I put them on I was like they look really stupid <laughs> so anyway these um, beefier versions uh, kind of serve dual purpose so I've put some I put holes in them so they can you can put screws straight down through into the wooden uh, supports in here so that's what's gonna attach the um, the chassis to the electronics box and then also the fact that this this shelf is gonna be um, the support or the corner supports for the table that's gonna sit down on here so there's gonna be like um, an MDF or, or plywood table that's gonna be the the main base part of the CNC so that's gonna go there there is also one other bit, which is it's basically going to be another sheet of plywood in here. And I'm going to cut out sort of like a hatch in the middle that you'll be able to open up. Um, and that'll be sort of how you can get into service the electronics. And then that will also, with the hatch in the door, you'll be able to kind of seal this box, which uh, will mean that I can keep it sort of dust free and clean. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it open like this because it'll just be easier to work on it this way without having to have like a, a hatch open and stuff. And the gantry will be able to move back and forth while I'm possibly <laughs> messing with electronics. Don't do that at home. That's just, you know, sometimes you have to do these things when you're literally hacking things together. Um, so that's all for right now. Uh, I'm going to get on with doing some wiring next.
bulk of the wiring is now done and I'm going to turn it on for a power up test. Um, I say that if I've not done this of course already, of course this is this is the internet, of course I've already done this, I'm not showing you this live. Um, but anyway, let's turn it on, see what happens. So we get the power switch on the side. And there we have it, it lives. Um, it's very hard to tell that it lives, but you can see a very small green light on there and the red light here on the book converter. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear it, but uh, this fan here is spinning up. You'll probably just about to see that. Um, so it went pretty fine. Um, there was a couple of assumptions I made though that turned out not to be correct, which is um, which is some of them are kind of strange, I thought. Um, firstly, these two fans, you notice this one isn't connected. And you might have noticed when I was wiring this up that I wired these two backwards. And that was because I had this idea that one of them would pull air in and the other one would you know push air out turns out <laughs> that's not gonna work for um, basically what I thought was I could just wire these backwards and that they just work um, in reverse <laughs> turns out that's not the case complete assumption I made um, don't know why I thought it would be the case I mean I mean that's how a lot of you know normal DC motors work turns out not in this case so if you plug this guy in it he doesn't do anything uh, and if I flip the wires around, which I did with some jumpers, it does work. Um, so if I want it to still do the same thing, uh, pull in air on one side and put it on the other side, I'm going to have to flip the fan, physically flip the fan around and, from the way it's mounted. And then also need to redo that uh, wiring uh, to make it work correctly, <clears throat> which is a bit <laughs> silly of me. But anyway, here's what it is. I'll fix it at some point. Or I could just maybe just uh, undo this connect here and just flip the wires around um, but yeah I'll, I'll figure that out the other assumption I made was that this and um, the like so the CNC shield just sits on top of the Arduino and you supply it with 12 volts that 12 volt supply is what it uses to drive these um, stepper drivers now I also thought that the 12 volts here would power the Arduino turns out it doesn't <laughs> which um, so which means that you have to power it either with its uh, power jack here or with the USB. Um, I don't think this is really an issue because pretty much all the time you're going to be using this, uh, it's going to be connected to the computer so that it's receiving its uh, G-code commands directly from there. That's the way I'm intending to use it anyway. Um, so it's not really that much of an issue, but it does mean that like if I was going down the route of making it you know, a wireless setup with, you know, a, something else, like a, some other computer to interface with it. I mean, again, it probably that can power, like if I had a Raspberry Pi, it could power the thing over the USB cable. But anyway, just another assumption I made that turned out not to be correct, but I don't think it actually matters in the end of the day. So the only real mistake is this this fan. Um, also thinking about it, I don't really know if it needs to suck air in on one side and blow it out on the other side. It's probably fine just exhausting air. Um, out of it uh, so yeah I might need to I might add some maybe cut some slots with some grills so that it sort of can draw air in into the cabinet and then the fans can exhaust it out um, yeah so that's about it uh, for the wiring and um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to program the controller so it doesn't have the firmware or anything running on it yet so I need to install the firmware and then get it moving so I'll put the wires back on for the motors and run them through here and connect it all up here and then see if I can make the y-axis move the same way as you did in the last video except powered by all this stuff instead of by the really hacky setup that I had um, the last time. Okay so we've made some really really good progress and um, basically I started messing around with some of the setup in terms of the getting the uh, the driver circuit working, getting the controller working, getting Gerbil installed on the controller board and making the machine move with Gerbil uh, running on it. So like this process, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm so shocked at this process at how good it is, how intuitive it is, how quick and easy it is. Uh, like it, it's absolutely shocking. Um, uh, honestly, it shouldn't be this easy. I've just had a, a grin on my face all day from playing with this and yeah, I honestly couldn't recommend it enough. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do a little demo uh, of what we've done. So what you can see here is um, the excellent Focus software, previously I think it was called G-Code Sender by um, SourceRabbit. And this is 
this piece of software is currently connected from my laptop via serial cable into the side of my CNC machine, which is then plugged into the uh, Gerbil controller board with the Arduino, which is running Gerbil, uh, which has the CNC shield installed on it. And that's all connected up to the motors. So what this lets me do is in real time, <laughs> I can click these buttons and I can move my CNC machine. So this is just the jog setting, which lets you manually move the machine uh, through through you set the amount of steps you want it to move by and we have it set in millimeters as well so i can use the buttons on my keyboard oh didn't mean to do that i can use the buttons on my keyboard oh actor one there we go one millimeter uh and then oh god what have i done okay yeah so that's just me pressing the up and down arrows of the d-pad on my keyboard and the machine is moving <laughs> to be honest that's just staggeringly good to me i can also type in some g-code here so this is telling it to go back to zero position which does nothing because we're already at the zero position so then i can tell it to move to the 40 millimeters position and it moves 40 millimeters and it's moving really, really smoothly. Um, I like there's a lot of tweaks I can do to this. This is infinitely tweakable, infinitely um, adjustable. Um, I've only really scratched the surface. I literally have spent you know a couple of hours messing with this, and I'm just so stunned at at how easy and quick this was to set up. And yeah, I, I really couldn't recommend this enough to anyone who wants to play around with this stuff because it's really this. It, this shouldn't be this easy <laughs> and, it, and it really was which is incredible um yeah in case you can't tell i'm, I'm really really happy and excited about this um okay so i'm gonna leave that here for this video because it was very long oh one more thing um there is a lot of detail involved or there is more detail i could put into um, you know explaining how i set it, all this up and some of the little quirks and how to install gerbil how to get all that up and running I will do that but the thing is it's not really it's a lot of like little programming and tweaky bits and fiddly bits and it's not really great for video so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, write an article uh, which I'll publish on my website and you guys can go there if you want to see the details on how I set it up and some of the little quirks that I encountered and some how I got around them um, yeah so that's about it for this video then so the next video what I will be doing what's the next task to be done really is I need to design the x-axis um, so at the moment, yeah, we only move back and forth in the y-axis. Um, and I would like to be able to, well, I need to be able to move left and right on the x-axis as well, or else this isn't much of a much of a CNC machine. So that's the next part. Um, if you've enjoyed watching this video, um, make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want to help support the work that I'm doing, you can find a link in the description to my Patreon. Um, any donations uh, that you make will go towards making better, bigger, better projects in the future. Thanks for watching, guys.